So I'm going to review with you root canal treatment on tooth number 14. This patient presented to me with symptoms of irreversible pulpitis with acute apical periodontitis. Review of the initial PA x-ray reveals a deep filling near the pulp, composite filling. Uh, so we initiated rubber dam placement, did some occlusal reduction, we proceeded with access. Uh, I use a black diamond burr for access. Uh, it allows me to sort of dig uh, apically as well as remove material laterally. I like the way it makes straight walls. Here we have most of the filling removed. We proceed with decay removal as well. Once that's all achieved, we proceed with the actual access cavity. As you can see, um, the decay is removed, pulp exposure has occurred, and now we proceed to start um, refining our access cavity. But before I do, the patient noted with my microsuction that she was feeling um, sensitivity of the nerve. So here we go with a palatal canal pulpal anesthesia just to get the patient numb. And this is an important thing to do to make it so you can work comfortably. Activity has been basically outlined. I attempt to get working length. Working length with the effects locator, I don't make it a life and death that I have to work my way all the way down the canal at the very beginning of the case. Um, if it gives it to me, I will get all the working length. If not, I'm not afraid to start doing some instrumenting to uh, get a little bit more straight line access in the coronal third. You'll see here I pre-curve a file, number 10 file, and it's going into that distal buccal canal orifice. I'll use a watch winding motion to get down there. After I get my working length, I use the 1504 uh, Tulsa profile, followed by the purple S1 Pro Taper. After that, I go to the yellow profile 15 uh, taper size 20, followed by the yellow pro taper, which is the F1, followed by the red profile and the blue profile to finish at a 30 apex, generally speaking. Sometimes in very large canals or in much tighter canals, I'll vary from these sizings as needed, but generally speaking, that's uh, that's the shape I end up with uh, in most cases. I find it to be pretty versatile and um, it works out very well for me. So here we are with the red profile. Now you'll notice that this filming is at double speed, so I'm not actually working this quickly, but uh, it does help to uh, make the video footage a little bit shorter than, than it would be if I did it at, at uh, normal speed. Here we are, the initial access is pretty much done. We've opened up the coronal third a little bit. Here I go with the number two gates, uh, and then a number three gates. And we just do a little bit of brushing with the number four gates in the very coronal portion. And you get a lot of this um, dent and debris up in the canal chamber, which I'll rinse out with sodium hypochlorite. And here's the number four. But the whole time I'm, I'm pushing these against the wall, the outer wall, such not to um, get into the furcation, I'll use a ultrasonic just to refine those vertical walls a bit. And we come back and suction it out. And as you can see with my micro suction, you can make it nice and dry. And then you can really get the sense that the access is starting to um, develop into its final shape. You can see how the canal orifices are starting to develop. And uh, now is when I take my final working lengths. I've got my working lengths. Proceed with the, again, I do with the 1504, and I go up. I don't crown down. Um, it's just the way I do it. I'm not sure uh, how I ended up doing it this way, but it seems to work better in my hands this way. Some people crown down. I still sort of do a step back crown down hybrid, and uh, I find that to be very efficacious. So you see, as I continue to go through the series from 1504 profile to uh, 
S1 Pro Taper to yellow 2004 profile to F1 Pro Taper to 2504 profile to 3004 profile. Uh, I go through the series over and over again and usually within two or three or four reciprocations of this process I get to the apex to working length um, with the shape. So uh, once shaping is complete we fit cones, take an x-ray to confirm our working lengths, everything looks okay and we proceed to seal. So I'll flush the canals one more time, use my micro suction to initiate drying. Uh, this micro suction is amazing because it really makes it so you can only use a few paper points, you don't have to use 15 boxes of paper points like uh, we used to do. And the paper points go in, once they come out dry, we're about ready to start sealing it up. As that canal the chamber is nice and dry, the canal orifices are nice and dry, a little bit of sealer. You notice I'm not putting in a ton of sealer. We down pack to five, seven millimeters from the apex, usually about five millimeters from the apex. I'm not crazy about packing every time to within three millimeters of the apex. Um, I just don't do it. Uh, I think some people really make it a higher priority, but as long as I can get to within five millimeters, six millimeters, I'm usually pretty happy. Because that's the palatal canal I'm packing down. I come back, place it in the museum buckle one, down pack that with my heat source, flatten it out. Again, I'm, I'm doing two times uh, speed on this video, so this is not really how fast it goes. Uh, this is a little faster than my hands are actually working, so. This is just for brevity's sake, so you don't have to watch 45 minutes of the canal procedure. Here we go with the backfill. Um, I use the element system to backfill this each canal, and then we'll pack it down just to pack down the top of the orifice. I use the tooth structure to help me bend the tip so that it gets into the mesial canals. You see it's being expressed in there, and then I use the large lugger to pack the canal orifices as such. We are going to go ahead and make some post space here. Rinse that all out, fit a post. I've already etched and primed and bonded the tooth structure cementing the post down. Once the post is cemented, then I proceed with um, building up, and I like to use this super white um, Rassler endo sequence material, which I think is great. It flows really well, cuts really well, sets up pretty quickly. This is sort of the thing I've been using for the last few months. I really, really like the results. Once we sort of clean off the excess, Light clear this, we prep it away, take the rubber dam off, and um, have a look at the final x ray, which I think looks pretty decent. So, as you can see, this is the final result a pretty densely packed root canal system, four canals, uh, post buildup is complete, and this patient is now ready for final restoration. I hope you found this video useful. And I hope it's helped to make your practice a little bit more um, enjoyable. And I hope you continue to watch these videos.